How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another video and today I'm actually going to be doing my very first kind of top 10 uh, video. So let me know down in the comments below if you guys like this format, if you guys like would like to see me make more of these style videos. But anyways, without wasting any time jumping right into it, here are the top 10 most ridiculously unrealistic scenes in the Fast and Furious franchise. Now before we jump into the 10th most uh, unrealistic scene in this franchise, Obviously, you know, I'm a car guy, so I'm, and I grew up around this time period, so I definitely like the series, you can tell, like, by my posters behind me. I'm, like many other people, I like the older films more than the newer ones, I think the newer ones are just completely ridiculous. And the fact that these movies are so unrealistic is kind of a reason why some people watch them. I mean, e hell, even I just continue to watch them just to watch them because I'm a fan of the series. So now starting off right at number 10 is the bridge jump from Too Fast, Too Furious. <laughs> so in the bridge jump, the Mark IV Supra, the I think Slapjack Supra, is in front of Brian O'Connor and his famous R34 GTR. And they pretty much go up a bridge in the same exact trajectory. I think Brian's going a little bit faster in the uh, GTR. But if you look back at the scene, like the trajectory of the cars when they're actually in the air is completely different. So it's not one of the crazier scenes as we'll see a little bit later in this video, but again, completely stupid. And to be honest too, I think they were only street racing for like $3,000 or $5,000 in the pot. And I've seen people who like don't race $5,000 or $10,000 street races because the road's too wet or the road's not prepped. So very unrealistic scene. That's not actually how street racing works. And honestly, even though GTRs and, and Supras were a little bit cheaper back then, no one's gonna potentially wreck a Mark IV Super or R34 GTR or even a clean S2000. I mean, the pink S2000 wasn't a clean one, but <laughs> no one's gonna uh, wreck those cars for that little amount of money anyways. Now coming in at number nine, we have the vault chase through Rio towards the end of Fast Five. This vault apparently was some like super high tech, really heavy vault that uh, the drug dealer had. And it had like, I think a hundred million dollars in it. And I mean, Dom and Brian are just casually dragging this thing through the downtown streets of Rio de Janeiro, like it's nothing. And by the way, this was before Hellcats even existed. So obviously like those chargers aren't Hellcat chargers. So maybe they were SRT eights or something that existed back then, but still, I mean, the combination of the actual weight of the thing and the amount of damage that it caused. And I know they're getting chased by like the corrupt cops that are get, apparently getting paid by the drug dealer. But I mean, at that point with the, the amount of damage that they caused to the city alone and probably killing X amount of people, the damn freaking Brazilian National Guard would have gotten involved at that point. I mean, it's just, but I mean, it's absolutely hilarious how they just completely decimate half the city and no bystander gets hurt. Now coming in at number eight, we have the longest airstrip in the world. And that of course is the ending airstrip chase scene from I believe Fast and Furious 6. And I mean, yeah, there's really not, no explaining I really have to do with this scene. I mean, it's completely stupid. Uh, it's a 13 minute long scene. And actually there's a YouTube channel out there called Engineering Ex Explained, and he's got like a couple million subscribers. So if you haven't, definitely go check his uh, video out on that. But he basically breaks it down and using simple calculations in order for that 13 minute scene to actually work would have to be between 20 to 25 miles long depending upon the speed that they were going and also keep in mind you're not taking down a giant russian aircraft carrier with like seven cars that's just not gonna happen and even though that airstrip scene is completely fake but what's real his family. Now for the seventh most unrealistic scene, I have to include the cliff jump after the train escape in Fast Five. Now this scene is pretty interesting because I really like the concept behind the scene. Uh, it's cool, but the the like the height of the cliff is just ridiculous. I mean, I like the fact that you know Brian barely escapes the 
kind of sand dune truck thing getting wrecked on the bridge and he hops on the back of, I think the C2 Corvette and him and him and Dom jump over the side of the cliff but it would be a lot more believable if the cliff was like 50 feet or maybe a hundred feet but as as the kind of camera pans out I mean that's like a couple hundred feet at least and after a certain distance I don't know what that distance is but after a certain distance jumping on a body of water or landing on a body of water is pretty much equivalent to landing on cement. I mean, they, they went out of that unscathed, completely went about their day and I think continued getting chased by like the drug dealers or something, but no broken bones, nothing. I mean, even like a broken lake would make this scene a little bit more realistic. Now for number six, it's kind of like, I guess two scenes in one or just one main sequence. And that is the, they got a tank scene. They got a tank. Again, it's just like the Rio scene. If there was a tank rolling down a public highway, I mean, I don't care what country you're in, uh, unless it's like a third world country somewhere, which they weren't, they were in Europe somewhere. I mean, there, there'd be like National Guard, there'd be military president. I mean, people would be scrambling jets. Uh, it's just so stupid at this point. And plus towards the end of the scene, when Dom takes the uh, Charger Daytona and like steers it into the side of the guardrail and launches himself over and saves Letty, which mind you, at this time, Letty, I think, still has like the amnesia problem. So she's like shooting at him. So uh, the combination of everything and plus the fact that he wrecked, uh, you know, Charger Daytona, I don't think they actually wrecked a real one because those things are like priceless nowadays. But uh, this, this scene is just so stupid. And also the fact that they're like trying to get away in like a Mustang Mach 1 and a, a Ford Escort. The, uh, news flash: those things don't stand a chance against a tank. I'm sorry. And now getting into the top five, you're gonna see that pretty much all of these choices have to do with the latter movies because of just how ridiculous they are. So coming in from the seventh movie is the car airdrop, car parachute scene, whatever you wanna call it. Basically when they went out the cargo plane with all the cars and landed on the highway in like the middle of like Mongolia or somewhere, I don't even know. Now, when I was actually making my list for this video, I noticed that a lot of people kind of put this scene a little bit higher on their lists. But the only reason why I kept this down is simply because like it is known in today's like modern militaries across the world that they do actually basically airdrop various vehicle vehicles, like all-terrain vehicles, even things like tanks and stuff. So, I mean, not completely unrealistic. The fact that yeah, they're dropping out of the freaking sky at like 40,000, 50,000 feet and they're a bunch of street racers. And now all of a sudden there's, you know, special operations. Of course, <laughs> that, that's definitely what makes it unrealistic. But the actual physics behind the scene is something that is at least possible compared to some of the other scenes that we're gonna see in a little bit. Now, number four was another selection that definitely deserves to be higher, but I only kept it down at number four simply because this was like, a comedic scene i mean everyone knows it's a joke and at this point in the series everyone knows kind of the memes behind these unrealistic scenes and this of course is when the pontiac fiero went to freaking space <laughs> Now it starts off and I think Roman and Tej are in this Fiero with the rocket strapped to it and they're putting on like 1950s, 1940s scuba gear. And you can actually see like holes like around the neck area where the scuba helmets sit. So, I mean, it's like a gag scene. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that this scene was meant for comedy. It's classic like Roman and Tej. Uh, shooting the shit scene and talking nonsense to each other. So that's the only reason why I didn't kind of include this a little bit higher because I mean, mind you, if they actually did this in like a serious part of the movie and it was like to escape the bad guy or something, yeah, this would be number one for sure. Because I mean, there's no goddamn way a Pontiac Fiero is going to freaking space. But again, it's just for the laughs. It's for the memes. Now getting into the top three, I have like the opening jungle escape scene where Dom meets his brother, John Cena in the freaking woods or something. And again, another scene out of the newest installment of the series, Fast 9. And the unrealistic part of the scene, besides the fact that they're off-roading in a Mustang GT and a Dodge Charger wide body Hellcat, uh, which obviously would never happen in real life, but the, <laughs> the very unrealistic part of the scene is when John Cena takes a freaking dive off the cliff and gets 
I guess, magnet magnetized to the fighter jet that comes and picks him up. And then to top everything off, because, you know, they got to get to the, the border because family, uh, Dom just freaking drives over the cliff with the charger. And for some reason, the bridge gets caught up in the tire and it kind of catches them and throws them on the other cliff. Again, I, I mean, what in the physics is freaking going on here? I mean, it's just completely ridiculous at this point. And the fact that this was like a serious scene makes it just that much worse. Now for number two, I have a scene that is featured in three movies and that is Han's crash. Uh, specifically in, again, Tokyo Drift, I think the seventh one or the sixth one, I think the seventh one. And then of course the ninth film. And the reason why I'm mentioning the ninth film is because, well, Han survives. I mean, the, the scene in the third film wasn't really that unrealistic. Like, yeah, you know, typical car crash. Car kind of blows up. That's a little bit over the top. But, I mean, we see him die. Like, he's laying on the side of the freaking car. There's gas poured all over him. And then two seconds later, it, you know, goes up in flames. Now, the reason why this scene is so high on my list is because we get absolutely no explanation as to how the hell Han got out of there. I mean, this was one of the key moments in the franchise that actually involved some pretty damn good screenwriting and planning because, I mean, the third one was like a sequel to like the fourth, fifth, and I guess even sixth one before they even came out with those movies. So this is a moment in the franchise that's really important and kind of like ties a bunch of the storyline together and again could potentially, you know, allow the other Fast and Furious characters to come in the future, which obviously they did in the ninth installment of the uh, series. But I mean, yeah, this was like a really good and thought out scene to begin with. And then they just completely ruined it by allowing Han to live and come back in the ninth film. I mean, I love Han. I love the actor, like he's a great guy, uh, but it's just like, it makes no sense. And now before we get to the number one most unrealistic scene, in, in my opinion, in the Fast and Furious franchise, I do want to do a quick run through of some honorable mentions just because of how damn hard this list was to make because of how many stupid scenes there are in the Fast and Furious. The boat jump in Too Fast, Too Furious was definitely one that was, again, another iconic scene, but uh, Roman and Brian went full Dukes a hazard, as Roman says, and launches a Yanko Camaro off the side of a freaking jump and somehow flies 100 feet and lands in a yacht. Also, Dom and Letty driving under the gas tanker in the fourth film was completely unrealistic. That's not actually how it works. Tankers don't just roll for an eternity. And plus, the scene was just that much worse because they didn't even do anything with the gas. They just like sold it to, or didn't just gave it away to street racers. And then another scene, which is kind of part of Han's crash, or I guess the chase that led to Han's crash, and that is the crowd drift through a very busy city square in the middle of Tokyo with at least 50 to 100 civilians in the middle of the street. And somehow everybody lives and no one gets hit by the sideways Evo RX-7 or 350Z. And then of course, how can you forget about the prison bus escape in the end of the fourth film and into Fast Five? As much as us muscle car lovers like to praise old school muscle cars for being so hefty machines and so sturdy, and I mean, that that charger probably would have looked like a tin can after rolling a freaking bus on top of it. And also don't forget the don't miss scene out of the seventh movie when Dom miraculously launches one of his chargers into a helicopter, barely misses, but somehow manages to hook explosives to the side of the, the helicopter and then the rock and which by the way his arm is broken or something at the time manages to shoot the explosions and the helicopter blows up and then of course for the final honorable mention the og ridiculously unrealistic scene in the fast and furious was the wheelie while burning rubber in the last quarter mile drag race between the orange supra and the original dodge charger now, although it's probably possible to burn a little bit of rubber while wheeling, uh, that much is just completely stupid because the entire purpose of doing a wheelie is actually being able to catch, uh, actually get some traction to begin with. Because, I mean, the only reason that wheelies actually happen are when the back tires actually have traction. And also don't forget that this quarter mile race scene lasted like, I forget, like five minutes. 
And then finally, for the number one pick for the most unrealistic scene in the Fast and Furious franchise is the Abu Dhabi skyscraper jump. Don't part the fly. Family. Uh, they got like a $2 million like Lycan hypersport hypercar thing that apparently isn't even a real car. I don't even know. Uh, and then they, they just launch it from, I think, the Burj Khalifa into the neighboring skyscraper. Uh, somehow the car is still completely intact. Oh, and by the way, when I was like re-watching these scenes to pick my top 10, Shaw also hits this car with an RPG while they're in the middle of the air. So do with that information what you will, but, but to put the cherry on top of this unrealistic scene, Dom and Brian somehow to last second slide out of the car as the car goes through the second building because, you know, he like lost his brakes or something and crashes to the floor and they're perfectly fine. So this video is definitely probably longer than I already anticipated. So I'm going to wrap it up real quick. But if you like this video, definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new down below. It helps me out a lot as a smaller content creator here on YouTube. But like always, guys, thank you so much for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. I don't have friends, I got family.